Hey, good morning. Welcome to Thursday, February 9th. We'll do that again as more people show up. Glad to have you guys here. Barry and Margo, good morning. Hi, Nancy Horvath. Good morning to you. Hope everybody's doing well. Take some time for some folks to get here. Hi, Ken Woods. Good morning. So I am coming to you um, from the from the Dell laptop, same one that I've done the last three days: Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we've had some uh, we've had some advance. Hi, Low Kip. We've had some uh, uh, some people looking at it, and we think that we found one of the issues or some of the issues and. So we will get, uh, so I'm happy about that because I was dreading having to transfer everything over after I got used to that. But anyway, technical stuff, but it's looking pretty good. Nancy, absolutely, we will pray for Kimmy and her MRI. Hi, Norma Bentley. It is wet. It's very wet. And it's going to be windy. It's not a day to leave cakes out or wear toupees. You get it? Someone left the cake out in the rain there. Yeah. Okay. Bad joke, right? Dad joke, for sure. And the toupees were wind related, right? Hi, Scott Johnson. Good to see you. It's been a long week already. <laughs> so, but I have to say, I think there's some really heavy rain that we might get. It's going to be, and uh, we will certainly um, watch that. Hello, Joan Riggs. I am, uh, I'm a little worried myself uh, about the rain because of all of the all of the uh, drainage issues that we've had at our house relating to both uh, storm water and, and sewage. I think we've got the sewage definitely taken care of. The storm water still concerns me sometimes. So I will definitely be checking on our basements today and and I and I hope uh, basement today and I hope that uh, I hope you guys don't have any problems like that. Hi Judy Martin, good morning to you and Judy is out there at the front desk today so she's hopefully feeling pretty strong. Hi, Linda Wolf. Good morning to you. We got 14 devices watching now, so they're coming on. Hi, Sandy Sour Beckett. I actually walked the dog in the rain. Got a little wet. So did he. Hey, Paul Wolf. Howdy. We've got 16. We're up to 901. So I will now, with all these, all these people coming on, Sue McCausland. Good morning to you. I will say once again, welcome, welcome to Pastor Tim's daily news and devotion on this Thursday, February 9th of 2023. Welcome to all. I hope your evenings were good. And uh, to those of you who sign on later and watch this as a break during your day, I hope your days are going well. And uh, and if you watch this at the end of the day. Um, which some do as a good night thing. Um, I hope your day was good. That you that you had a great day in the Lord. Um, very in Southeast Michigan, we getting a lot of rain and a lot of wind today. But it's not snow, right? We should be happy about that. But uh, frozen ground and and o almost an inch of rain will almost always bring some problems. So be careful on the roads. Be careful if you're on the roads. Hi, Judy Hatch. I watched the news today, and uh, it's been the the traffic has been. Really, not much to speak of this week because there was no snow. It was everything was warm, no ice, and um, man, all of a sudden this rain came and there was traffic accidents all over the place. So just be careful. Just be careful. All right. As far as news from the church goes, um, we've got um, all sorts of stuff going on. We always encourage people go to our website, go to our Facebook page that you're watching this on. Most of you are watching this on. Um, anything of importance will be there. The calendar is there. 
biggest thing that's got happening right now is um, we are having uh, worship on Sunday at 10 a.m. Come on by, and it's not nearly as busy as it was last week. Last week we had communion, and then we had installation of, war, uh, of uh, elders and uh, deacons and uh, trustees, and then we all, then we had communion. So lots of stuff going on. Oh, it was Boy Scout Sunday too, right? So we're just it's just it's going to be laid back compared to last Sunday. So good morning, Janet Lyons, and hello, Bob Ando. So that's it for the news. It's 9:03. We're going to move over to our devotions today and I have not looked at them ahead of time because I got into my office and uh, I didn't have a good night last night just uh, ended up sleeping on the couch just because I didn't feel very well and I didn't want to expose my wife to that but uh, the dog enjoyed it he enjoyed sleeping on the couch with me so somebody had a good time um, so but uh, so and then when I got in here I I'm gonna do a shout out right now Russ Carlson, thank you, thank you, thank you. She, he came in last night and uh, looked at my uh, uh, my the Mac that I use and found probably the reasons why I was having so much problems broadcasting. And uh, it, it comes down to a comes down to you know people not making their stuff um, work well with Apple, right? Everybody hates Apple. If you, or their competitors do, so they always make things difficult. So we did find a way around it, we think. I'll try that later on. But my thanks to Russ Carlson for coming in and spending that time. Thank you, thank you so much. Takes a big big uh, li uh, weight off of my shoulders, right? Okay, so we're going to do our breathing exercises today. We're going to breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five. If you would like to join me, feel free. Are you ready? Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord today with our first devotion, which is Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods, small g, bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Small g. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. And we continue in our readings in Isaiah, and it's not a short one today either. It's just uh, we get these big, big passages. This is um, Isaiah 60, and it's verse 1 through 22. So um, uh, we, we read uh, in 59. We read 58 two days ago, 59 yesterday. Now we're in 60. This is kind of continuing on. Um, remember, it's God reminding them of what the ancestors of the people did wrong and really warning them not to do it again and why the punishment of exile was um, delivered and the fall of, of uh, the country but now how through he raised up um, Cyrus that um, of the uh, and and that Cyrus had freed the people and said go back Cyrus actually built the temple again to say you can go back and uh, but it seems like maybe not everybody wanted to go back and so uh, here's this is almost like a um, uh, this is almost uh, telling people why they should go back right here we go so let's read the word of the Lord for us today out of Isaiah 60 verse 1 through 22 arise shine for your light has come 
and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Naaboth shall minister to you. They shall be acceptable on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and like doves to their windows? For the coastland shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from far away, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you down, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall always be open, day and night they shall not be shut, so that nations shall bring you their wealth, with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom, they will not serve you, that, for the nations and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. These nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify where my feet rest. The descendants of those who oppressed you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breasts of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze, instead of stones, iron, I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, or your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever. They are the shoot that I planted, the work of my hands, so that I might be glorified. The least of them shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will accomplish it quickly. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Very long one, right? But so wonderful, telling people about the great times to come, and not because that they're going to get an advantage over anybody else, but that they will be God's people, right? And people will flock to them so that they may participate in that. And um, the um, it talks about, um, let's see if I can see it. Um, talks about the king. So we as Christians can look back and you can see that there are references to, to Jesus. It talked about the king shall come in a procession, right? Well, remember we call it you know, the three kings of Orient, you know, we just know that there were multi multiple and there was frankincense, golden myrrh, so we know that there was three of them at least, but there might have been more.
and uh, the Hebrew word is really kind of wise, but we've made them into kings because it really feeds into this prophecy, right? That so this is not one that we uh, often look back and and necessarily see Jesus reflected in it, but there's other ones that are even even closer to that. But I but I still see it, and, I, and perhaps you do too. All right, let's go over here to the New Testament. We're going to go to Second Timothy. It's um, chapter two, and it's verses fourteen through twenty-six. So here's uh, Paul continuing to speak to this young minister that he has raised up and is about to go off and do his own things, um, spread the gospel himself. Paul is writing this. We believe he's in Rome, probably for the last time. He's in Rome in prison, and um, and he doesn't get out of this one. Uh, he is uh, killed in Rome. So here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Remind them, this would be uh, the people that he's ministering to, remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Himerius and Philitus, who have swerved from the truth by claiming that the resurrection has already taken place. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands, bearing this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His and let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. In a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse themselves of the things I have mentioned will become special utensils, dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. As a minister, um, I have read this many, many times, right? It's Paul saying, you know, must not be quarrelsome, kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting people with gentleness. So um, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. But these are not just words for a minister. They are for a minister, but they're good for all of us. It talks about how uh, baseless talk, right, and gossip, how harm, not, not, not only wasteful it is, but it's harmful, right? And, uh, and words hurt. Jesus has a lot of work, things to say about words. He says it's not what goes in your mouth that defiles. You know, it's like you can't defile yourself by what you eat, but by what comes out of your mouth you can defile for sure so good words good words all right we'll go over to mark uh, the gospel reading and now we're continuing on we're in 10 chapter 10 verses 17 through 31 and um um now remember um yesterday we heard two things. The first one was um, the question about um, divorce. Is it legal? And Jesus goes and takes it beyond just that legal argument of just right then and there to the kingdom, right? And talks about uh, the need for loyal and faithful relationships. And that's the expectation of God. Um, and then it ended with some kids running around and the disciples tell him get these kids out of here and he says no actually and then he and he does a teaching and says you got to become like these children in order to anybody has to become like these children in order to become now that's up for interpretation that's your own person what does he mean by that right and i told you what i think 
is that we need to we need to drop the patina and uh, the sarcasm, um, the doubt that we have, right, and just become like these innocent kids that, you know, they look up and and we as adults they believe what we tell them, you know, they believe what we tell them. So um, I think that has a lot to do with it. But there's other people that that uh, have different interpretations. So anyway, this is where we were yesterday, and now we're going to read today, right? And we're going to hear about kids again, but so. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them, Children, how hard is it, it is to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with per persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first so ends this reading of the word of the lord all thanks be to god man mark is so wonderful because it's so compact right but it's also frustrating because it's so compact i mean this this has got like six things we could talk about here and we don't have that kind of time do we so maybe you're thinking about certain things, and, and, and I encourage you to do that. So um, we have this man who, who uh, has been following the law, the law, right, of Moses. And um, he, he wants to have this kingdom, and he says, what do I have to do? And he says, and he calls him good teacher. And Jesus makes a point here. He says, why do you call me good? Now, he wasn't, I don't think he was uh, calling the man out. I think because when he said he was good, he was basically admitting that he was that G, he did believe that Jesus was Son of God, right? Because the only person that could be good was God. And he goes through this. Well, you know, here's all these Ten Commandments, and he goes, "I've done all those things." And he goes, "Well, you lack one thing." Because he does. He looked at him, and then this is such an important part of this. He loved him. Jesus loved him, and he said, "You got to do one thing: sell everything you own." give the money to the poor and then you'll have treasure in heaven and then follow him and the man couldn't do it he couldn't do it and then we get this well 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 known parable about the camel it's diff more difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle and of course that is um, I mean that's so ridiculous we say well that can't happen and that's what exactly other people were but he says, you know, with anything, God is possible. Now, he's not saying that money is evil. Right? This is the way that some people preach this. It's not. It's just the fact that money is a very common thing in possessions that people actually put above their relationship with God. So they, they form an idol out of money. And I think that that is the lesson that's there. And then, um, then here's Peter and the other disciples saying, well, Lord, look, we've given up everything, and we're following you, right? And he says, yeah, you're, you did, right? And that'll be rewarded, but don't expect it, like, right now, right? 
because the first will be last, and the last will be first. Anyway, so um, there we go. I got something here. All right. Let's go back over here, see what we've got. Got just going to look back at these and have you guys had discussions going on while I've been doing this? Sometimes you do. Hi, Helen England. Good morning. Thank you for posting that up, Karen. There you go. Uh, I was going to talk about this, but Friday, Good News Live with Sue Maxey and Carrie Van and Russ Carlson is going to be there on the to be interviewed. I just told you about everything that he did for me, so he's a great guy. You'll enjoy that. Hi, Joanne Butters. Barbara Shoot, hello. Um, good morning. Good morning, Barbara. Hi, Bob Ando. Oh, yep, there's Carrie. Remember, she put the links in there. Kids Hope, we need volunteers and also interest in the friendship group. So things are starting to come back up again. We need people, though. We really need people. Remember, these aren't just ministries that we... We need you to do those ministries, right? We really need people. And, and uh, so please do. Jerry Morgan, hello. Well, Barbara, maybe we can do that. Or if somebody else can do it, I don't know. I'm uh... There you go. All right. So we need to pray for Kimmy. That's a big thing to pray for today, right? So Kimmy is the daughter-in-law of uh, Nancy and Kip Horvath. She's been uh, walking a, a journey here and um, it's been difficult but man has she been strong and, and, and her family has been strong too and we just pray that all of these things are going to work out well so we will pray for that so alright here we go let us, uh, let us pray alright Heavenly Lord we thank you uh, for all of the great things that we see around us and Lord, there's things that trouble us and things that we'd like to have come to fruition. And so, Lord, we pray for your will, that your will will be done not only in this earth, of course, but especially in our lives. We might not be able to change the course of the world, but we can certainly change the things around us. So if we need to rearrange ourselves so that uh, your, your light and goodness can shine, then, Lord, we're ready. We're ready for that. And as, uh, as always, as we pray, we pray for the sect and we pray for the people who feel alone. Uh, we pray for the ill. We pray for healing so that uh, they will know the true meaning of shalom, uh, oneness and wholeness with you and your creation. But we especially want to lift up uh, Kimmy, who has continued to battle fiercely. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful things that her doctors have been able to do and the healing that you have given. She's going through a test today. Lord, we pray for wonderful results. And um, as we do, and we pray this for everyone. We continue to pray for Don Jones. We pray for uh, we pray for all who are ill. We want to pray for Barb Stapleton that she continues to heal from her shoulder surgery. Judy Martin that she will continue to gain strength from uh, from her operation. And we thank you for delivering here her here to the church today, so that she can uh, continue to do her volunteering that is so important to the life of the church. Lord, we thank you for everyone who is here today, we ask for your blessings on our lives. We do ask this all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. Big, long readings today, right? Okay. So, uh, remember, even on this rainy day, God loves you, I love you, we all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how, okay? God bless you, and uh, have a great day in the Lord. I won't be with you tomorrow, but I'll certainly be in person, live, on Sunday at 10 a.m., or you can watch here or on our YouTube channel. 
And uh, tune in tomorrow at 9 o'clock for the Good News Friday where you'll hear all the news, not just the stuff that I decide to put in there, but all the news from Carrie and Sue Maxey and a wonderful interview with our own Russ Carlson. So God bless you. Well, have a, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.